Testing. I have one mic. Testing, testing. It's it this works. We get we take turns at the podium. Speaking, speaking to you. Test. So, so speaking to testing, testing. Test. Testing. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> this lights up. Testing.
Testing. Say testing. Testing. Okay, after much ado, I'll call the May 22nd meeting of the Technical Advisory Board to order. Angela, if you'd please call roll. Taylor Terrio on behalf of Brandon Buris. Present. Justin Hill. Here. Darren Phillips. Present. Amy Preyu. Present. Sarah Krupa. Scott Longman. Present. Kent Bullfrass on behalf of Brian Lazina. Present. Charles Sutcliffe on behalf of Zach Lemoyne. Here. Ray Herndon. Present. Emily Buxton on behalf of Lisa Creesman. Eric Johnson, he's absent. We have 10 board members in attendance today. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Angela. And now I'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from March 10th if they've been reviewed. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Carries. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda for today. Motion. Motion and second. Any opposition? Hearing none, that is approved. Uh, before we get started, a couple of things. Uh, make sure your phones are on vibrate or silent. And before we um, go into reviewing these pre-applications. I did ask uh, Cole Garrett, the general counsel, if he would come up and kind of give us some uh, guidelines on recusal at, for projects within our shops and that kind of stuff. Cole Garrett. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so as y'all are probably aware, um, as the technical advisory board, uh, y'all's job is to first evaluate objective criteria to make sure that all of the applications that have come in um, actually meet the criteria and qualify um, to be moved forward through the process. And that is what you are doing today. Um, obviously, many of you represent some non-governmental organizations or state agencies, um, and you may have projects that um, your organization or entity has submitted, um, but because we're just looking at objective criteria and whether or not it checks the yes or no boxes, uh, I don't think that there's any uh, need for recusal uh, in this part of the, the process. So um, down the line, once we get into ranking um, these projects, it, it may be prudent uh, for members of organizations or entities not to rank their own projects and then let the collective ranking um, fall where they may. But uh, that, that would be my suggestion moving forward. But for today, um, unless you have a personal interest in one of these, I, I don't know of any legal obligation you'd have to recuse yourself from uh, looking at the objective criteria. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. And also, we're all aware on uh, general housekeeping. Um, we're 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 learning as we go here on some of this. So uh, we did have discussions early on about what does it mean to be in uh, cooperation with a state entity for an NGO. And we did develop some language um, that's going to be on the website. I won't read through that right now unless I need to read it in. Um, but I will say we also decided that since it was a little vague on, on what exactly that meant, that anyone who puts in a pre-application with any tie to a qualifying uh, entity will get provisional uh, approval, and then they can move on uh, to the next round. And during that time, they have time to flesh out the, the that, uh, relationship with that entity so they, we can see if they qualify. We'll also say that uh, as we go through this, we're not really going into the merit of the application, we're just qualifying. This is just where we look to make sure that this, uh, these applications uh, qualify with the, the law as written and that this entity can move on to uh, the full application. Okay, so I will, I have a uh, 
the evaluation criteria sheet before me for each one of, oh, let me back up again. Also, uh, we had 50 applications, uh, pre-apps for this program. Uh, a decision was made to, to review the first 25 at this meeting and then the next 25 at uh, Thursday's meeting. So that's uh, chronologically as they were received, we'll do the first 25. There was a vote of the board. Um, I know we had some, some issues with our system last week. The statewide uh, email was down and whatnot. Uh, that did not affect any pre-applications coming in, but it did affect our communications back and forth. So I apologize uh, that that could have been handled better, but I think we, we did the best we could. And today, as I said, we will review the, the first 25 pre-apps that were received. Any questions on that? Okay, I have, uh, as I was saying, I do have the uh, criteria sheet in front of me that I went through each one of the applications um, and, and scored. And I will read through mine, and then we I will open it up to discussion, or we can discuss it discuss it as I go through each one of the uh, topics, and then we can uh, yay or nay it at the end. Does anyone have any concerns with that path forward? Okay. Does this work? Okay, now it's working. Um, I just want to clarify because we do have a lot of the applicants in the room. Um, or if we do have questions, are we calling them up as we go? Or are we calling them up during the public comment portion of this agenda? My recommendation would be to, as we are going through them, if we have a question, to call them up at that moment if they are available. Um, and then, of course, we'll open up the uh, meeting to public comments at the end if somebody has something they want to bring to our attention. And I guess also for my clarification, as we go through this criteria sheet, um, for instance, you know, some of these are yes or no's. Is it, is it just that they have to get mostly yeses or all yeses, or how do we actually determine that? No, in accordance with the, the law as written, and Cole, please correct me if I'm, I speak out of turn here, but the first two blocks, the applicant partner uh, affiliation and the project category, or what was written in statute and what actually qualifies this pre-application to move forward. The considerations um, are just something that for our cons uh, consideration as stated. In, in hindsight, we maybe could have done away with that part of it and just qualify them on the first two categories, but again, live and learn. And so also we're gonna ask for some of these applications that don't make it clear if there's an applicant partner, um, I see we have a definition of public agency here in front of us. It doesn't include federal agencies as a partner, which I think is kind of an oversight probably. Um, no, I don't think it is. Uh, I believe as I understand it, the rule, the law was written for state uh, agencies mm -hmm. and political subdivisions. It had to be affiliated with a state entity. So federal, so it has to be, if they do have some of them, I, I did see some of these with like federal, um, Fish and Wildlife Service, for instance, US Fish and Wildlife Service, but not necessarily LDWF or a state agency. Does that mean they're disqualified then? Yes, in my okay. opinion, they would be disqualified unless they have some, one of these uh, local governing authority, political subdivision of the state, state agency. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can ask for clarification from the applicant if they are here, if they only have a federal agency partner. Yes, there will be have to be something in there to where they have a non-federal partner that is one of those that I just stated. Okay. <laughs> Look like you want to say something, Mr. McClinton. No? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that reinforcement is but okay all right i will start with the uh, first project uh, saint tammany living shoreline at goose point and uh i i on my sheets under the name of affiliate entity or partner i, I just went ahead and wrote who the uh, qualifying entity was and on mine i put saint tammany parish which is appropriate uh, under project category, I selected land conservation of important national, natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat. Uh, if, if anybody had anything else, I'd 
That was my only choice. And then on considerations, I selected yes on everything, but um, if it was underserved area or area of designated need, I just didn't see it in the descriptive. So everybody agree with that um, scoring or do you feel otherwise? Okay, well then reviewing what I selected, uh, in my opinion, this meets uh, the LOF criteria. Uh, do we have to make a motion on each one of these? Let's go ahead and do it just in case. Uh, I will entertain a motion to uh, qualify the St. Tammany Living Shoreline at Goose Point pre-app. So moved. Second. Motion and a second, any opposition? Then I will approve this for moving forward. The next pre-app for consideration is, and uh, forgive me if I misp uh, mispronounce this, Miniter Boat Launch. Uh, my uh, upon review of it as the affiliated partner, I put City of Covington, which is a local governing authority. And as a project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have anything different than that? I just wanted to clarify for, um, it doesn't actually have to be a project that conserves it, as long as it's on recreational land, is that correct? That's how I understand it. Okay, if there's no other comments there, upon, uh, moving down to considerations, I selected yes on everything except for aligning with state plans. I didn't see anything specific to a state plan and uh, contiguous with conservation properties. I didn't see any designation for that. Anybody have anything different on that? Okay, I will uh, entertain a motion to accept or qualify the miniature boat launch pre-app. So moved. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and second, any opposition? Hearing none, I approve this miniature boat launch to move forward. Next pre-application I have is the Amy River Wildlife Sanctuary Footbridges. Uh, upon review of this pre-application, I could find no uh, partner that was in the qualifying uh, portions, no local governing authority, no political subdivision of the state or no state agency. Uh, the, uh, the NGO, the non-governmental organization that I could find was Baton Rouge Audubon Society. Uh, so I did not move forward any farther forward with this. Does anyone know of any, or did you review it and see another um, qualifying entity? Can we ask if the applicant's here and wants to clarify? Sure. If they are here. Is there someone, is there a representative here from the Baton Rouge Audubon Society? There is not. And anyone else's review of this application, pre-application, did you see a, a qualifying partner? I had that same question. Okay. Uh, then not seeing that, I do not see where we can uh, move forward with the uh, qualifying the pre-application. Is there a motion to reject this pre-application? Nobody wants to reject. I'll motion to reject it. <laughs> we have a motion to have a second. A second, right. All right, then I am rejecting this application. Scott, when you, when you go through the applications, can you call out the number, if you don't mind? I mean, not this one, but moving forward. Uh, the, this yes. The application? Okay. Sure. Giving me more to read. 
Okay, uh, the next pre-application up for review is Margaret's Ridge Marsh Enhancement Refurbishment, number 27093114. Uh, the, I wrote down the uh, name of the entity and partner as uh, Lafouche Terrebonne Soil and Water Con Conservation District, uh, along with CPRA. So uh, I did mark that this was a political subdivision of the state. I believe they had a letter attesting to such. And then under project category, I uh, selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat. Did anybody have any... Uh, thoughts other than that. Okay, and then on considerations, I selected yes to everything except uh, the state plan, which I would hope it would be with CPRA being involved, but they did not, that I saw come out and write that. And is the project contiguous at other conservation properties? I didn't see that it stated that either, which does not affect its uh, approval. Does anybody have anything different with those selections? All right, I think that moves us forward to uh, a motion for adopt or approval of this uh, pre-application. So moved. I have a motion? Second. Motion is second, any opposition? All right, I select this one as moving forward. Next pre-application is Shorebirds of Louisiana Wetlands Expansion, number 276-16532. Uh, the qualifying uh, entity would be the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Uh, under project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat and conservation project on working lands, farms, or forested land. Does anybody have any other selections or disagree with those? Okay, under considerations, I selected everything except for aligning with the state plan. I didn't see a mention of a specific in there. Does anybody have any different selections on that? Yeah, we had aligned with a plan. I'd have to go back and double check which plan they said they aligned to. I had it aligned with Louisiana Wildlife Action Plan. Okay, I may have missed that. I did not have it as um, contiguous or uh, underserved. Oh, actually, I read that wrong on mine. Okay. Yeah, I did have it underserved, but I think some of these maybe are using the broader definition of underserved that most yeah. of Louisiana fits under. Yeah, and I also noticed on, on a few, uh, they kind of came up with their own uh, definition of underserved for different uh, types of uh, needs. Uh, but again, that's not a qualifying uh, thing. So um, uh, I will entertain a motion to accept this pre-application to move forward. So moved. And a second? Second. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, I'll mark this as moving forward. Next pre-application is Russell Sage WMA Wetland Enhancement, number 276-16551. Uh, I marked this down as an NGO working with public agency and the name of the affiliated partner is Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And ducks on. And as project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, water quality projects related to land conservation or land management, including those lands that protect drinking water supplies, conservation project on working land farms and forested land, and conservation project on historic properties adjacent to or integral to habitat restoration or enhancement. Does anybody have anything different or disagree with those selections? Okay, and under consideration, I selected everything, but uh, I didn't see something about underserved. Um, I didn't see a necessary uh, straightforward timeline. 
And I also did not select uh, anything for maintenance and management on the project. Anybody see anything different than that? Or disagree with those selections? Does anybody have any of the, I had that it didn't align with the state plan. Was that specified? Oh, and I did not have that in there either. Thank you, missed that. I did have it aligned with the plan. Um, I'd have to go back and check which plan that was. I think it's in italics. It says, uh, I don't think they're state. I think that they're just national. Oh, it might be NACA, right? Well, NACA is a funding source, but I'm assuming it aligns maybe something with that. And again, I would say to anybody listening in on this, uh, either in the audience or, or watching the recording later, just these uh, would, are not a qualifying issue, but maybe something you want to flesh out in your full application for maximum points. All right, with that discussion, I will uh, entertain a motion to move this forward. Make the motion. And a second. Second. Any opposition? I'm marking this as moving forward. Right, my next uh, pre-application um, is City of Slidell Bayou Bonfuk Bonfuka Waterfront Boardwalk, number 27556911. The, uh, uh, affiliated entity is a local governing authority, the city of Slidell. And uh, what I marked for project category was conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have something different or disagree with that? Okay, and considerations, uh, I selected yes to everything except uh, contiguous with other conservation properties. Does anybody have anything different than that? I did have a contiguous. I have to double check. Was it mentioned in the description? Um, I'd have to go back. To yeah, sorry, these are all kind of I don't learn together. <laughs> you know, some of these I felt like if they're contiguous with a, a public water body, you know, a natural resource, then it could be a conservation property. Wasn't sure if that was the feeling of the committee, but uh, okay. I was wondering about that. But again, it does not uh, interfere with qualification, but I would encourage the applicants to uh, flesh that out in their full application. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, move this forward. So moved. And a second. Motion and a second, uh, any opposition? All right, I'll mark this as moving forward. Next up is the Gulf Coastal Plain Habitat Restoration in Arkansas and Louisiana, number 274-79312. Uh, the applicant partner is a state agency, the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And under project category, I marked down land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, and conservation project on a working land, farms, and forested land. If anybody have anything different or disagree with that. Okay. And then on considerations, I marked yes to everything except uh, I felt it was a little lacking in uh, benefits into the future. And uh, timeline and maintenance, which is kind of iffy on that anyhow. Anybody have anything different on that? Or disagree with those? No, I think it, just to bring up that this is one of a few that deal with funding staff, which I don't know if the program really addresses funding staff. Um, you know, is just in the general terms of what the program should be doing. So I think it's just a consideration if we do move it forward um, to kind of think about that, whether that should be something we're funding in staff time. Any other comments? My other comment was because the geography was so broad, um, I, I couldn't really answer contiguous with conservation or underserved area. Any other comments? 
Yeah, I think on the schedule, it simply gave a period of performance. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's why I've marked them down. Hearing all that, I will entertain a motion to move this project forward. Second. Motion is second. Any opposition? All right, that one moves forward. Next pre-application is the Lake Villa Pond Recreation Enhancement, number 274-87545. I have written down the affiliated entity as Jefferson Parish Ecosystem and Coastal Management Division. Under project category, I have land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, and water quality projects related to land conservation or land management, including those lands that protect drinking water supplies. Does anybody have anything uh, selected different or disagree with that? I had a um, conservation project on recreational properties. I had that as well. Okay, I'll add that. And then under considerations, I selected yes to everything except contiguous with conservation properties. Uh, I did not see anything about underserved or areas of designated need. And uh, I did not select anything for maintenance and management of the project. They might disagree with that. I had underserved and I did have the last one you just said. Okay. I will add that to mine. Any other comments? Then I'll entertain a motion to move this one forward. So moved. And a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any opposition? Moves forward. And I will take a moment to uh, show some love to the applicants, pre-applicants who basically went down this criteria sheet and wrote their pre-app. That made it really nice. Yeah. I mean, everybody else is fine too. But. <clears throat> uh, next pre-application is a False River pub Public Access Project, number 276-32027. Uh, I have selected local governing authority, Point Capi Parish. And under project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have something different or disagree with that? All right, and under considerations, I selected yes to everything except aligning with a state plan, contiguous with other conservation properties, and underserved. Does anybody have anything different or disagree? Well, I'll just make a comment um, as I did last time. It applies to the previous pre-application from Jefferson Parish as well, <clears throat> uh, which was by Lake Pontchartrain, and this one's by False River. Um, I'm not sure if we're considering that. Can you pull your microphone down a little bit? It's kind of hard to hear you. Sure, yeah. Um, I was saying that, as I said a minute ago, and, and I think it applies to the pre-application we just reviewed from Jefferson Parish, um, which was near Lake Pontchartrain. This one's near False River. I'm not sure if we're considering that conservation property or if we're looking at actual you know, record title conservation properties where we've acquired easements or something of that sort. Yeah, I was- Just a comment. Personally, I was looking for something uh, contiguous with a wildlife management area, a refuge, uh, even parks, mm -hmm. uh, anything other than uh, state water body may be a little broad. Mm -hmm. Or like, but, what if it's a scenic river? I'm not sure if this one is, but I mean, I'm sure some of these are probably, you know, contiguous scenic river, which would be in that program. I guess the other thing I'm kind of questioning is that some of, not this one, but some of these applications have, do have letters of support from CPRA or LDWF. I'm assuming if CPRA provided a letter that it's, it's concurrent with the master plan, right? I mean, that's. And that's what I, there, right? earlier there was one that uh, CPRA was a partner, but then in the description, it did not talk about master plans, which I'm sure if CPRA is a partner, it's going to be. Continued. Yeah. Right. And I guess there was, I, I didn't comment only because it wasn't in specifically explicitly stated in the proposal right. in the pre-app, but you know, yeah, we're not right. there. So yeah. 
it kind of goes without saying, but I wasn't going yeah. to add something to someone's application that they did not insert. So maybe clarification for pre-applicants that if they do get advanced and they do have a letter from CPA or LDWF to clarify that it's part of the master plan or part of, I mean, if LDWF is providing a letter, is it because it's concurrent with the state wildlife action plan or some other plan y'all have, assumedly? I don't know if I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that would be an appropriate thing to do. Yes. Right. And, and again, uh, I don't, these considerations aren't necessary for uh, approval, but this is a great uh, teachable moment for pre applications to uh, fill in uh, holes possibly in their uh, application, their full application. Any other comments? I'll entertain a motion to move this uh, pre-app forward. So moved. Got a motion? Second. And a second. Any opposition? Hearing none, I'm marking this one moving forward. Next pre-application for consideration is Lockport Elevated Wetlands Boardwalk, phases two and three. Number 275-88692. I selected local governing authority, the Lafouche Parish government. And under project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. In their application, they had put conservation project on working lands, farms, and forested wetland. I mean, forested land, but I just didn't see that. But so I just selected that one. Does anyone have any uh, difference of opinion or select anything else? I just wanna clarify this obligation. They include the total cost of this project. It looked like they put the request in, but not the actual cost, unless they're just asking for 100%. Yeah, I'm just Anybody have anything different on the project categories before we move on? Okay, then on the considerations, uh, I said yes to uh, the pre uh, cost outline, but no to any uh, funding other than uh, for, for match. So it looks like it was 100%. And then I had yes to uh, how it uh, benefits in the future. And I didn't see any of the other questions necessarily answered. Does anybody feel any different? No, um, I came to the same conclusion. Okay. I will uh, entertain, entertain a motion to move this forward then. I guess I just want to kind of state on the record, I encourage some of these pre-applicants to look at the full meaning of the program. I mean, it matches a big, you know, portion of things we're considering. And, you know, that's something people should consider in their full application and not just, you know, it's no matches, like not great. So, I would just encourage every applicant to look through, you know, the legislation, the full app, the full program details and everything else to make sure you're having the most competitive application possible. With that said, I will entertain a motion to move this forward. No. And a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, I'll move this forward. Next uh, pre-application for review is conservation of working lands at Live Oak Farm, Vermilion Parish, number 276-41224. The only uh, entity I saw on this was Land Trust for Louisiana. I did not find, see in my review of the uh, pre-application that there was a state entity, so I did not uh, rank it to move forward. Does anyone? Can you come up to the microphone? All right, and this is where I asked for someone from Land Trust for Louisiana to come to the microphone. <laughs> the podium over there. And please state your name, your affiliation. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so my name is Cindy Brown. I'm the executive director at the Land Trust for Louisiana and the applicant for, um, for this particular project. There's some user error here. My, I was under the impression that you guys wanted to just know who the funding partners were for projects. Um, I failed to give any indication that we've had incredible support from all of the state agencies on this project. In fact, um, you know, we went to Department of Ag early on, and unfortunately, there was no funding for this working lands project. I think what this, what our project shows, is that there's a real glaring absence of funding for working land, large working lands projects that can access a lot of federal money. Um, so we have had tremendous support, not only from Department of Ag, the uh, Department of Wildlife and Fisheries was an early, um, an early sponsor of the uh, AIL program that we were able to access that funding fell away. This project has been underway for many, many, many years. Um, you know, I, I did not get letters of support from those state agencies from this, for this pre-application phase, because again, I didn't realize how critically important that uh, just showing that support would have been. I, got, I guess I thought you guys were more interested in the funding aspects, but um, Commissioner Strain has been very interested in this project. Um, LDWF has been very interested in this project because it's a working lands project with a huge wildlife conservation component attached to it, which is the essence of the AL, uh, AL program that the um, NRCS offers to us here in Louisiana that we've not been able to take advantage of because we don't have state matching funds. So that's why we're coming to you guys to really consider this project as part of your portfolio. Does that provide any clarity at all or? It does, I appreciate the information. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see, we look for more than a letter of support. Letter of support would give you provisional until you can flesh it out. But uh, as I understand it, it has to be more of a uh, relationship, a partnership uh, in some form or fashion with a uh, one of those uh, qualifying entities. Um, if it was omitted from the application, Cole, bail me if I'm wrong here, but I don't see how we can consider that. Coming to the podium. So I think what you're evaluating here are the four corners of the document. Uh, certainly people are here to, to give, to answer questions, to offer uh, clarification. Um, but I, I think, you know, for fairness, you're, you're kind of bound to the four corners of the document as they were submitted. Um, I guess it will be up to the board to determine how, how much testimony is, is flushing things out versus uh, a departure from what was uh, submitted. I mean, since we have been sort of discussing this over the last month and trying to make this clear, you know, I would suggest that maybe we allow the land trust, maybe, you know, a certain amount of days to provide some sort of, you know, documentation that they do meet this interpretation that we have since we have discussed, you know, I think we were talking about giving, you know, some sort of conditional approval until they could respond to this. Right, and, and nothing against this proposal. I, I read through the entire thing and it, it is some great work. Uh, however, I think to set a precedent of accepting applications and then after the closing, someone saying, yeah, but would open us up to all of these coming back, if any of them that are, are, are not qualified to coming back with something and saying, well, yeah, but I have this. So uh, nothing against the project, but I just don't see how we can um, allow for a complete absence of that uh, qualifying event to be remedied after the fact. I mean, the fact that we're putting updated language on the website now kind of suggests to me that, you know, we haven't quite figured all of this out because it is the first round of applications. So I, I mean, at least for the first year, I would suggest giving them a little bit of leniency to fix this, you know, and if they can't fix it within a certain period of time, 30 days or something, then we can, you know, move, not move the, you know, at this point we're, we're advancing pretty much all of them forward anyway. So, you know, if they can't meet it, then, you know, we just won't accept it in the next round. I, I still disagree with that because I think we made a, a large concession into if you have anything in there saying there's a relationship between uh, the NGO and one of these qualifying entities, we would give you that opportunity to flesh that out and, and tell us mm -hmm. what that is. Uh, this one had had none of that, so I think we're 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 going a little farther than than we should. 
I, I'd like to just make one more <laughs> comment, please, because um, again, I think what this project really shows us as a state is that our working lands programs as a state are wholly underfunded and that we're not getting some really great working lands work done. We have worked hand in glove with the Department of Agriculture in crafting this project and working with the family. We went to the Department of Agriculture early on who was unable to provide us with any matching funds. Um, and we've been able to cobble together over $4 million to support this program without a penny of state funding. And so, you know, I, again, I think this project is an excellent example of why we need Louisiana Outdoors Forever, how we are able to leverage dollars that otherwise we wouldn't be able to. So again, I just really asked the entire uh, advisory team to really look at this again, please, because um, you know we, we, we really need to get this project done. Um, it's a tremendous project for the state. It is the first attempt at anyone in the state to access millions of dollars in a federal program that we wouldn't be able to access otherwise. We have not done, other states are getting hundreds of millions of dollars through this federal program. Louisiana has not been able to access a penny of it because we have not dedicated any funding to these types of projects. So I can get you all of the support letters you want from the state entities. Um, it was a misinterpretation on my part and I agree, the guidance is not good on this program. Um, it's not clear at this point, and that's fine. It's a work in progress, but I really do request some more dis dispensation on this for for this project. This is this this is a real feather in Louisiana's cap, honestly. This project. Thank you. I appreciate your testimony, and I, I will put this to a, a vote of the uh, board. But I do uh, recommend that we. Uh, uh, do not qualify this one, and in my opinion, we are bound by the application period and the rules that govern it. Uh, to, to change that sets a precedent that uh, I, I think would be difficult to go back on. I'd like uh, to make a motion that we extend the um, period to 30 days for people like them to fix it. And I'd like to take a roll call vote of uh, the board. A moment of clarity, we already rejected one. Yeah, so and I think so we'd have to go back to all of them. Yes, agree. I have a motion. Do I have a second? There's. I would like to comment that I think this is exactly the one of the kinds of projects that was intended to to use the match. However, I also feel bound by the rules that we set forth. So I guess one thing to consider uh, <clears throat> was something that I made a note of when I reviewed this one was that they did mention that they've secured five hundred thousand dollars from the U.S. EPA. And in our checklist, it states the, the last applicant partner is a non-government organization working with a public agency. I didn't know if that meant state or federal at first, so I was really glad to see the clarification that we had a couple of weeks ago about that. Um, the fact that this mentions US EPA in here, uh, that they've secured half a million for this might uh, be worth considering. Uh, the interpretation of the law and, and going back to the authors, it was state entity. Okay, okay. Mr. Chairman, if I might just say a few things. Sure. So uh, in full disclosure, the Conservation Fund, who is the organization that I work with, is a partner on this project. Uh, it's a project that goes back eight or 10 years now. Uh, it's a project we engaged the Land Trust for Louisiana. Uh, as Cindy mentioned, Louisiana Ag and Forestry. We also have a letter, early letter of commitment for uh, match for Louisiana NRCS funding, which is a major bulk of the funding for this project. So there was a $5,000 match contribution from the Department of uh, Wildlife and Fisheries. Um, this, we've engaged the Vermilion Parish uh, police jury in this process. Um, I think there was just a, a shortfall with regard to representation of you know, who, who is actually engaged in this project. It's far and wide, it's local, it's state, it's national in agency representation. Uh, I just wanted to point that out that, uh, you know, and again, I think this kind of goes back to some of the language here 
And I was a part of the study group. And I, my assumption was in hearing public agency referenced that that also would qualify a federal public agency. Uh, this, this language is, you know, kind of more definitive, definitive, so I understand where it's going, but uh, as a member of the study group entity, as well as, you know, this board, my assumption, frankly, personally, was that federal agency representation qualified. That's obviously not the case, but uh, I do think that maybe some uh, leniency to, to try to uh, clarify uh, by the applicant could be considered. And certainly nothing disparaging the, the, the project. Uh, the agency for which I work for supports this project. I just don't see how we can do it within the rules. But there is a motion on the table, and I wait a second. Hearing no second, the motion fails. I'll also just make a comment. Um, looking back at Act 714, it, it does say state agencies, political subdivisions of the state, including local governing authorities and non-governmental organizations working in coordination with public agencies may apply to the program for funding. I think it's pretty clear the intent in, in that language is that it's uh, state agencies, political subdivisions of the state, including local governing authorities. I think they're, they're referring to state or local, not federal. Right, and there needs to be a nexus with a state agency or subdivision of some sort. Do you want to clarify, Cole, or is that good? You want to give the interpretation, Cole? I'll just get you a seat up there. Um, so this definition hasn't been voted on or, or anything by, by the board, but kind of the, the way that we as the administrative staff were, were working with it was, you know, a nexus needs to be something more than a letter of support or someone saying, hey, this is a good project. There needs to be more of a partnership uh, component of it. The state agency or the local entity doesn't necessarily have to be funding it or or anything, but it needs to be something more than, hey, it's not incompatible with the statewide program or something to that effect. Um, regarding the definition of a public agency, uh, we we also what what Mr. Hill was saying earlier, it looks like the law talks about local entities, uh, state governmental entities. Um, it looked as if the uh, the legislature's intent was that it be uh, something at the local level, not at the federal level, but it, admittedly, it, it just says in coordination with the public agency. So we had adopted a definition that we find in state law, which talks about state and local uh, governmental entities. And I wish in good conscience that I, I could vote to move forward, but within the rules, I, I don't see how I can. All right, so I did not mark it, mark it down as um, uh, meeting that first hurdle. So at this point, I will entertain a motion to deny moving this forward. I object. I'd like to take a voice vote, a roll call vote. For, okay. Uh, well, I need a motion before we take a vote. I make a motion to take a roll call vote of whether to move this project forward or not. I need a motion to The reject. motion is to approve the project. Okay. I have a motion to approve the project. I uh, need a second. Hearing no second. Yeah, a second. Oh, got a second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please, Angela. Taylor Terrio? Nay. Justin Hill? Nay. Theron Phillips? Yes. Amy Prayu? No. Sarah Krupa? Yes. Scott Longman? No. Kent Bullfrass? No. Charles Sutcliffe? No. Ray Herndon? Yay. Emily Buxton? Yay. 
We had four yeas and six nays. Okay. Uh, that motion fails. I'll now entertain a motion to deny the project. Second. Uh, I need a motion first. No, I'll make that motion. Uh, and a second. Second. Uh, do we want to do a roll call? Or just let's roll, do a roll call. Roll call. This is a motion to deny moving this forward. Taylor Terrio. Yay. Justin Hill. Uh, yay. Theron Phillips. Nay. Amy Preyu. Yay. Sarah Krupa. Nay. Scott Longman. Yes. Kent Bullfrass. Yay. Charles Sutcliffe. Yay. Ray Herndon. Against. Emily Buxton. Nay. We have three nays and seven yays. All right, then that uh, pre-application is denied. Regrettably. Okay, next pre-application is Delorge Terrace Marsh Planting. Number 275-88692. Uh, the applicant is Lafouche Terrebonne Soil and Water Conservation District, which is a political subdivision of the state. Project category, I marked it down as land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat. Anybody have anything else or disagree with that? I'm sorry, 275-88692, Dualarge Terrace March, Marsh Planning. Move. Oh, please. Well then, what is this number? Okay, then this number is 276-42441. Let me end this. My apologies. And uh, any changes to what I had said? If not, the considerations I have, I selected all but alignment with a state plan contiguous with conservation properties and underserved area. I selected yes for everything else. I, I had no for the, the last one plan for maintenance and management. Anybody else have uh, anything different for maintenance and management, yes or no? Uh, I had yes because the very last uh, paragraph states it does not going to require active management. Right, I had the same. Okay. All right, anybody have anything else different or disagree with any of those? All right, then I'll entertain a motion to move this forward. So moved. And a second? Second. Any opposition? All right, I will mark this move forward. <clears throat> okay, check me on this number. I have Port Fouchon Terraces and Living Shoreline, 273-63972. Back on. Uh, I have Local Governing Authority, which is Lafouche Parish Government. And under category, I have Land Conservation of Important Natural Areas, including Fish and Wildlife Habitat. Does anybody have anything different? I disagree with that. Okay, under considerations, I selected yes for everything except contiguous with other conservation properties. Does anybody disagree with that? Not hearing any, I will entertain a motion to move this forward. I'll move that. And a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, I'm marking this move forward. Okay. 
Next pre-application for consideration is Coastal Water Quality Program, number 27644386, Tangipahoa Parish Government. And under project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat and water quality projects related to land conservation or land management, including those lands that protect drinking water supplies. Does anybody disagree with any of that or have a, a different selection? Okay, under considerations, I selected yes to everything except underserved area. And I don't, I didn't put anything for maintenance and management. But that might have been an oversight. Did anybody have anything different? I think they did have a paragraph about area designated need or underserved area. Um, they spoke a little bit about that. Okay. I will change mine. What about maintenance and management? Anybody have anything on that? Yeah, they did have a page about maintenance and management. Okay. I, didn't, I was like that. I didn't have anything, so I was unsure about that. Usually I'll put a mark. All right, anybody uh, disagree or have any other uh, considerations? Hearing none, I will uh, entertain a motion to move it forward. Uh, I apologize, I'm, I was looking at a different application. You were right on both counts, okay. um, the maintenance plan and the designated deed, I apologize. Okay. And on this one, I'll, I'll make that motion. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. Right, I will, oh, any, uh, any opposition, sorry. Okay, then we'll move this one forward. Next pre-application is Bucktown Harbor Park Recreation, number 2764670. I have this marked as local governing authority, Jefferson Parish, ecosystem and coastal management. And under project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have anything different than that or disagree? Okay, under considerations, I, sele I selected yes on the first three uh, and nothing, I didn't see anything uh, designated the rest. I had something for, I had yes for undeserved area, underserved area, and also had yes for maintenance plan through the Jefferson Parish Recreation Department. Okay. Anybody else have anything different? Um, it says, uh, the application says uh, that it's been endorsed by CPR and Louisiana Coastal Master Plan. So I said yes okay. to being a lot of state plan. May have missed that. I will change that. Any other differences of opinion or omissions on my part? All right, I will entertain a motion to move it forward. So move. And a second? Second. Any opposition? I will mark it move forward. Next pre-application is Marsh Island Big Impoundment East Structure, number 27646988. And the applicant is a NGO working with a public agency uh, Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and Ducks Unlimited. I marked down project category as land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat and conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody uh, have any difference to that? All right, under considerations, I marked yes to everything. I had a mark that the underserved area was sketchy, but I went ahead and said yes. Anybody disagree? 
All right, I'll entertain a motion to move this one forward. Move. Motion, I have a second. Second. Any opposition? All right, this moves forward. Next pre-application I have is Iberia Parish Public Fisheries Improvements Renovations. Number 276-47085. I have it selected as a political subdivision of the state, the Iberia Soil and Water Conservation District. Under project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Anybody have anything different or disagree? Okay, under considerations, um, I selected no to the pre-app describing funding other than, uh, or other type of match. I didn't see where they had any. Um, I didn't select contiguous with conservation and I didn't see where it was a, a state plan mentioned. Does anybody disagree with that? That does not interfere with their approval. So I will entertain a motion to uh, move this forward. So moved. Do I need a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, this moves forward. Next pre-application up is saltwater barrier control structures, schooner bayou project. That's number 276-47809. I marked down local governing authority for Million Parish Police Jury. Under project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, water quality projects related to land conservation or land management, including those lands that protect drinking water supplies, and conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have something different or disagree with those choices? Hearing none under considerations, I select, selected yes to everything except underserved and I did not see a, a maintenance and management. Anybody have anything different? I wasn't, I wasn't clear on the match. It looked like they didn't have any, but they may be considering applying or it wasn't committed. I thought they had applied for and it was contingent upon, but I, that's how I read it. Anybody? I read it as you did, Scott. Okay. Okay. Um, any other? issues, considerations. Then I will entertain a motion to move this project forward. Move. And a second? Second. Any opposition? Hearing none, move this forward. Next up is Gretna City Park Restroom Project, number 276-50929. I'm marked as a local governing authority, the city of Gretna. And my project category was conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have anything different? I don't understand how bathrooms are a conservation project. Did you select anything? I didn't that? select anything for this one. Some, some of the previous projects, um, I also had that same concern, like boat launches and things like that, since they aren't actually conserving a natural resource. Um, but it seems like that wasn't. I mean, I agree with you. And I also, but I also think if we had to stretch it, I would say a boat launch, at least you're launching a boat for a recreational purpose. I don't know what a bathroom does for recreation at all. You know, I mean, I don't think we should be funding either of those options, but I mean, this I think very much stretches credulity of this program to approve a bathroom. 
as I read it, the overall uh, project was a conservation project, park, whatever, and that this was a component of it. So, but that was my. I mean, if we're, I mean, I think that's fine to be in a park, but it would be like, you know, creating a stormwater pond or something on the park that would be conservation focused versus bathrooms. Sure, is there someone here from the city of Gretna to speak on this project? Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon, my name is Amy Aber. I'm the Parks and Parkway Superintendent for the city of Gretna. So as spoken, we just completed a $6 million project that was funded through the Louisiana SAFE, which is stormwater adaptations for future improvements. Um, in part of that project, we created stormwater mitigation options, green infrastructure. We increased the ability and accessibility to our residents to come to the park. And we created some um, ecological wildflower gardens in order to better serve the residents and to give them an opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise have in our area. Part of that grant didn't allow for the building of structures. And so what we're applying for today is two small restroom facilities to allow the residents to enjoy it and to better serve them in regard to being able to maintain their time at the parks. And I would say we would have funded all of the other things she talked about, but not the bathrooms part of this. I think for consistency, if we're going to deny construction of a bathroom, we wouldn't have to revisit boat launches and, and piers and things like that as well. And I would welcome that. Did anyone select anything other than uh, the conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use? Or did anybody select that one? So you want to have another selection for that project category. In order to qualify, we have to select a, a category for that uh, pre-application. I mean, I think the best selection that we can use on this one would be the conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. And I think if we want to take a minute and kind of think about what we mean by recreational properties. Um, I think part of the intent here is to enhance our public recreational opportunities um, on these outdoor enjoyment properties. And then part of it is, you know, not really related to recreation at all. Uh, working land, <clears throat> working land, farms, and things of that sort. So I think there's an intent to have a holistic approach, including recreational properties. What, um, I mean, a, an improvement is a property, a boat launch is an improvement. Uh, bathroom at City Hall, I think probably shouldn't be funded by this committee, but a bathroom at this location, I think could pass muster. So uh, something to consider. And I agree that, uh... This round is just qualifying these for the full application. And then uh, after that, we have received the full applications is when we dive into uh, ranking according to the conservation benefit. I just want us to consider us going to the legislature and asking for more funding for this program. And when they ask what sort of natural resources have you conserved, us saying, well, we built some bathrooms at a park. Like, is that really what legislators are going to hear when we say what we're spending $10 million that we're really fighting for at the legislature for this? Like, yeah. I want us to really consider the intent of this program. And I think when we think of recreation, this isn't what we're thinking of in terms of recreation. I think that we should all be thinking about what we should be spending money in the recreational pot on. But I think we're also uh, muddying between uh, qualification and approval. And I think that, again, when we come in, come back here with our full applications, and that's when we go into the details and decide what gets funded or we rank based on what we think should be funded or not. I, 
Well, I don't, I don't think, this, think this qualifies at all then. And I would, again, take, make a motion to deny this project. Okay, I have a motion to deny this project. Any seconds? Without a second, that motion fails. So at, uh, as I had stated, I had that uh, project category of conservation project and recreation properties related to important natural areas and public use. Um, if someone, uh, Amy, you had a comment. Yeah, I just, I was, when looking at this project category sheet, I had the same questions about conservation project on recreational properties when reading uh, many of these applications that involve um, boardwalks and and boat launches and things like that um, that those didn't those were not conservation projects in my mind then I remembered the law did not say conservation project on recreational properties the law said recreational properties which is um, maybe not specific because we're not funding a recreational property we are funding projects so I think the interpretation of conservation project is accurate, but it should be applied across the board. So if we are going to fund a boat launch that allows people to access the water, it's no different than funding a bathroom that allows people to be present in a park, but we may wanna reconsider all those types up and down. I don't know, I'm just putting that out there. Again, I think we're just qualifying for the next round. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say overthink, but I don't want to, uh, uh, again, we're casting as wide as net as possible. And once we get the full, full uh, uh, projects, then we can go and score them based on their benefits. All right, it's seeing no other change on project category. Under consideration, I selected yes to everything except for contiguous conservation. Um, I don't know that I saw a, a schedule for timely completion as well. Anybody have anything different on that? They've got a rough timeline of no more than 18 months. Oh, okay. So I consider that a timeline. All right, what we can do is uh, I'll entertain a motion to, um, to move this forward and then we could do a roll call vote for approval. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please, for uh, moving this forward. Taylor Terrio? Yay. Justin Hill? Yay. Theron Phillips? Yay. Amy Preyu? Yes. Sarah Krupa? Yay. Scott Longman? Yes. Kim Bullfrass? Yay. Charles Sutcliffe? Yes. Ray Herndon? No. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Nay. Nay. Emily Buxton? No. Eric Johnson? Oh, he's not here. All right, we have two nays and eight yays. All right, mark this move forward. Next pre-application up is Shell Beach Fishing Complex, number 27654727. I have this selected as a local governing authority, the St. Bernard Parish government. And under project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat and conservation project on historic properties adjacent to or integral to habitat restoration or enhancement. Does anybody disagree or have another selection? Okay, hearing none under considerations, I selected yes to everything except contiguous with conservation properties, underserved, and uh, plan for maintenance and management. Does anybody have anything different or disagree with that? Okay, uh, then I will entertain a motion to move this forward. I'll make that motion. And a second. Any opposition? Hearing none, this moves forward.
Next up is Porto Track Longleaf Pine Flatwood Savanna and Flatwood Pond Project, number 2763024. I mark this as a non-governmental agency working with a public agency, which is Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and Restore the Earth Foundation. Under project category, I selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat and conservation project on working the land, farms and forested land. Does anybody have anything selected differently or disagree? Okay, and under considerations, I selected yes to everything except contiguous with conservation properties. Does anybody disagree or have something else selected? Is it contiguous with uh, Bunks Creek area with bunches of, I'm not sure what that is, but a marked yes. Is there someone from Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries here to answer that question? No. Please go to the and identify yourself, please. Which button, or it's on, okay. Um, I'm Brian Early with Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries and I uh, helped put this proposal together. Um, yes, it's contiguous to Bunches Creek uh, Natural Area and also St. Gabriel Mitigation Bank, which has got a conservation easement on it, those two. Um, properties. So I will change my vote to yes on contiguous. So I have yes across the board. So maybe clarify that in the application. I'm sorry? Just maybe clarify that further in the application. Sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no other considerations on here, I will entertain a motion to move this forward. I'll move that. A second. motion and a second. Any opposition? This project moves forward. Next uh, pre-application I have is new fishing pier and wharf Lafitte Drive-In Park, number 2765481515. Under applicant partner, I have local governing authority, the city of Abbeville. And under project category, I selected conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody have something different or disagree with that? Okay, under considerations, I selected yes to everything except state plan, uh, contiguous, underserved, and maintenance and management. Does anybody have something different? Okay, then I will entertain a motion to move this forward. I have a comment. Oh, comment, sorry. Um, th there are multiple parts to this project. Um, part of it is installing sidewalks and parking lot. So um, I know we're not considering uh, ranking at this time, but um, I had a question about downgrading projects or funding projects in part. So I just wanted to say that projects had to have multiple um, components like this might be in the future under consideration for partial funding. Do you have a question for the applicants or you just want to have that stated? Okay. Notice to city of Abbeville. All right. Um, then I will entertain a motion to move this forward. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any opposition? This moves forward. Okay. Must be getting close to the end. I'm having a hard time getting apart. Next uh, pre application is Freshwater Bayou Shoreline Protection Project, number 27654953. I have local governing authority, the Vermilion Parish Police Jury. Under project category, I've selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, water quality projects related to land conservation or land management, including those lands that protect drinking water supplies, 
and conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody disagree or have something else to like? All right, under considerations, I selected yes to everything except state plan, contiguous with state with conservation properties, underserved, and maintenance. Does anybody disagree or? Yeah, it? I'm confused on this project. I think maybe the Vermillion Parish is here. It looks like mm -hmm. there's a TV um, number. Does that mean it's part of the master plan, coastal master plan, if they wanted to clarify? Is there someone here from Vermillion Parish yeah. Police Jury that can come to the podium? Please introduce yourself. Yes, Todd Vincent with Sellers and Associates, consultant to the parish. Uh, the project is funded, CPRA has an intergovernmental agreement with the parish and the project is funded that way. Uh, the entire reach that was intended to be constructed wasn't able to be constructed with the budget we had. So this is part of the coastal master plan then? Yes. Okay, so maybe that should be clarified in the full application. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or changes to considerations? I'll entertain a motion to move this forward. I'll move. And second. a second? I have a second here. Any opposition? All right, this plan moves forward. Next up, must be the last, is Sunset Park Restoration and Recreation Project 27641861. I have selected local governing authority, St. John the Baptist Parish. Under project category, I've selected land conservation of important natural areas, including fish and wildlife habitat, and conservation project on recreational properties related to important natural areas and public use. Does anybody disagree with that or have some other selections? Okay, and under considerations, I answered yes across the board. Does anybody disagree with that or have another selection? Maybe underserved area could be um, explained more in the full application. It just said some tracks in the parish are underserved. Note to St. John the Baptist Parish, explain your underserved. Right, uh, I will entertain a motion to uh, move this forward. And a second? Second. Any opposition? Moving forward. And that was the last of our 25, hopefully if somebody's counting. Yes, okay. Um, all right, any other comments from our the board? If not, I will uh, open the podium for any public comments. Does anyone here from the public that wish to make a comment? Yes, sir, please come to the podium um, and state your name and <laughs> too long. I'm David Kiviaho with Kisa Corporation. We are grant consultants with the city of Slidell. I just wanted further clarification on what you were talking about on um, boardwalks and piers and, and how they relate to kind of, we're one of the ones with Bayou Bonfuca that have the boardwalks. And a few years back, Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries and the big infrastructure grant um, funded $1.6 million of the 2.6 million for the Slot El Marina. Um, which had some conservation pieces to it as well. Um, and what that has done for the city of Slidell is astronomical. So I'm a little concerned because we do have conservation pieces within for the full application. Do we need to really, really hammer in on those? Or when you get to the full application uh, process, review process, will you just automatically negate any boardwalk projects or any peer projects? because that's a big concern of ours, because we've seen it work and we've seen the conservation piece that we did for the previous grant. I'm not normally nervous, but I'm nervous. <laughs> I guess so that, that was my question. Uh, my recommendation and anybody else on the board will wish to speak is 
if you are going to have that boardwalk, you need to explain to us how that is tied into the conservation and how that uh, drives forward some of the other guidance of this project. So it, I don't think anybody is saying you can't have a boardwalk, but how does that uh, bring conservation or, 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 or fit the need of all these other uh, requirements of the law? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sure. that answers it. Appreciate y'all too, thanks. And also, I, you know, this is not a, um, now that we've gone into the uh, full application or we, after we do go into it, if there are questions, you know, we can be, we can communicate to, to offer assistance as we go through this process. Uh, any, okay, any other comments from the, uh, I'm back. oh, sure. Um, yeah, I'm just, the, the police drawer was the main parish we, we worked with. Um, this is in regards to the working lands project that was submitted in Vermilion Parish. He, he pointed out to me a handout that was given, I guess, to the audience today. The, the middle section here, solely for the 2023-2024 round of funding, since the verbiage was clarified after the pre-application window, which is true, Technical Advisory Board may provisionally accept project applications from non-governmental organizations, continued upon the applicant providing additional information regarding the nexus or relationship with a public agency in their full application. So I'm just pointing out that you guys did have the ability to request this. Correct. And that full application. When, we, uh, when we met and had that discussion, it was if someone says, I have a letter of support that in, in our general counsel's opinion was not enough to substantiate the uh, qualification. So we made the, uh, we uh, allowed for provisional appoint, uh, approval for someone with a letter of support to say, is it just a letter of support or is this a relationship with this uh, that that meets the need of the, of the bill. But unfortunately, in, in yeah, your case, you had no, okay. you had well, we nothing. Have a letter of support, but wasn't required. Right, so no, a but a non-government, an NGO working with a public agency was required. And that's why we could not go with that. All right, any other comments, public comments? Please come to the podium and Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Owen Best with Wildlife and Fisheries. Um, coming off of that question, I had a project that I did not submit because it's with the joint venture. Um, and I wasn't sure if there was enough nexus to consider a partnership. If it's funded through state dollars, would that be, even though it's on private lands through the joint venture, would that be enough of a nexus for future proposals or no? When you say state dollars, are you talking about Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries? Yes, sir. Then that would be the nexus. That would, okay. that would be the Just making sure for future reference. I did not submit it this time, but will in the future. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment? Brian Early with Wildlife and Fisheries again. Um, I had a question about um, additional funding. It's stated in the guidance document in the manual that uh, additional funding had to be um, uh, listed in, in the pre-application. Um, and we do have additional potential funding coming through, which is, uh, it's listed in the text and a note was added on to the budget sheet but it was not included in the overall price. Could that, if that additional funding come through, could that be included in the final application? If it was in your budget sheet, I, I don't know why. It wasn't calculated in the budget sheet, but it was noted on the budget sheet that there's potential. Flesh that out in your full application. Okay, thank you. Right, any other public comment? 
then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.